It has been a year since Kherson was liberated from the Russian army. In the time since liberation, the city has changed a lot. Now the Russian army shells Kherson daily from the left bank of the Dnipro River, causing more and more destruction. But despite the constant explosions, life is in full swing in Kherson. As the locals say, here it feels much more vibrant, although in essence it resembles a lottery. It is impossible to predict where and when a Russian shell will fall. Now in the city, despite daily shelling, shops, cafes and beauty salons are open. People say that regular attacks by the Russian army will not force them to close their business. Only the shuttle had to be adjusted to accommodate the curfew and the storefronts are still filled with plywood. I returned to Kherson because this is my home and I love working with coffee, with people and I want the townspeople who stay here to drink delicious coffee so that they come to the place, they remember and receive the same quality coffee as they had before the war. The building of the famous Kherson theatre named after Mykola Kulish. During the occupation, Russian troops tried to stage plays about the so-called Russian world and even organized pseudo-referendums. After the occupation, the theatre resumed its work but in a different format. Artem Filenko, the chief conductor of the Kherson Theater named after Kulish, left temporarily occupied Luhansk in 2014. When Russian troops entered Kherson on February 24, 2022, he decided not to evacuate again. We had already left the Luhansk region and when we were picking up our things, we passed a lot of checkpoints. This is very dangerous, so we decided that now it would be better for us to wait. We decided to stay, this was such a sacred sin, to wait for liberation, and we did. They were liberated and notified the whole city about it. A year ago, on the day of the liberation of Kherson by Ukrainian soldiers, Artem played the national anthem of Ukraine on the trumpet in the central square. He says that it seemed that he could be heard even on the left bank of the Dnipro River. For three or four days there was complete euphoria. For us it was a small but at the same time a very big victory. First of all for me, it was the hope that we would continue to win and that my native Donetsk region, Luhansk region where I worked, would return to Ukraine and it would be possible to come and see my friends. Now the theater building is deserted, but despite the shelling, cultural life does not stop here. Writers and artists come to Frontline Kherson. Concerts and literary evenings are held. The city is very beaten up. Fatigue is noticeable. Constant danger is visible. This is reflected in the behavior of residents, in their habits. There are not many people on the streets, but strength, confidence and faith are visible. After all, people come to cultural events. We were driving around the city and it was so touching. People were sitting at a coffee shop drinking coffee. Utility workers were doing their job. Such details speak of fortitude and the fact that the city, despite the constant danger, does not give up and is not afraid. The first days of the long awaited deoccupation showed the real position of the Kherson residents. The whole world watched what happened on the square a year ago. Thousands of people wearing Ukrainian symbols hugged and cried with happiness. Thanks to Ukrainian military personnel sang Ukrainian songs and were able to speak their native language freely. Here in the first days after liberation, everything that the Russian occupiers left behind was burnt at the stake. Posters, flags and even Russian money. People say this is truly Freedom Square in every sense of the word. November the 11th became the biggest holiday for Kherson residents. Darya Litovchenko for UATV.